So you want to go ahead and start doing product reviews. Maybe you've seen my other video talking about um, pretty much where to start in the part one of starting your you know product review channel i talked a little bit about how um, to work with companies what to watch out for when they're contacting you and going through that but how do you really start on doing product reviews and where do you start at as far as picking your first product to review and what are some things that you should know as far as developing the first couple of videos of those product reviews or just doing uh, product showcase videos, maybe some unboxing and stuff, which you should look out for. And I'm not going to go into much of like the algorithm and everything like that. Um, there's plenty of channels out there that will teach you all those things for YouTube, as well as, you know, whatever other platform you're trying to upload those videos or pictures to. But I can tell you uh, my personal experience and why I decided to pick the first couple of videos that I did on product reviews and, and everything and my thought process behind them, as well as telling you guys a little bit of a secret towards the end on how to, you know, make this production as far as doing these videos a little bit easier for yourself. And um, obviously that's going to be dictated towards, you know, what kind of equipment you already have to accomplish said, uh, I would say video making process. But with that being said, let's go ahead and cover, I would say the first topic on hand, and that is why you should pick certain products over other ones for at least your first couple of videos to get an audience, to get uh, some kind of traction or wherever and get views towards you. And then you can cover probably the products that you would actually want to cover. And the reason why I say that is because there might be some products out there that might be in a niche or might not be uh, well suited to grabbing people's attention at first because they're so different than what typically people would want. And the reason why I covered in the beginning or wherever, and sadly a lot of them were bad um, as far as like videos go, but I covered the Godox ES45s. I was a little bit late to the era of people, you know, going for the Elgato key lights because they're so similar. And I talked about the benefits of the Godox version of the Elgato key lights or wherever, because they had a physical module. You didn't, you weren't tied to the stream deck. You weren't tied to you know syncing up with your computer internet all that stuff you had a physical control to turn them off and on you can take them anywhere and again you weren't worrying about software or anything like that it was just the light worked you know what i'm saying and it was it had all the capabilities of the elgato key lights and on top of that they're mostly meant to be fill lights like i have a fill light on this side and my main key light over here but you can still see in the background that i use the godox es45s um, as my streaming lights and stuff because i have a camera that actually has you know a low f-stop or a low aperture on it so it's going to let in more light because these lights if you're using webcams and stuff like that that don't really have you know a big sensor like an actual camera does these lights are not going to work well for you you're going to have to have them super bright and that's why people bounce them off the walls and etc and the stuff that i talked about in that video and that video did somewhat decent as far as like i think it's over 100 views at least at this point but it was too late to the realm of people already have the elgato key lights you know people already know about those lights and stuff like that when it comes to you know getting into streaming and they're just so into the elgato system and stuff like that and with other companies trying to do lights now and everything to compete with elgato um it's just going to get brushed and covered up wherever underneath the popularity of elgato and their product already being out for a long time you know what i'm saying even though the this full, full version or wherever i found for like a hundred dollars and at the time the elgato key lights were still two hundred dollars you see what i'm saying and it's like the what was on offer was good and the information was good and the product was good and everything and people needed to know about it and they could have made a better choice on their purchases than getting you know only thing really on the market was the elgato key light as well as something from razor now nowadays if you look up these kind of similar lights you're going to find ones from godox you're going to find ones from razor you know elgato you're going to find ones from newer like these kind of style panel lights or wherever that are meant to be you know um I would say rim lights or fill lights or wherever they're becoming key lights as everybody is saying and you're seeing so many different companies trying to come up with different iterations and adding rgb and all that stuff or wherever um that are you know cheaper than the elgato key lights and everything like that some of them even work with the stream deck i think the newer lights do and everything so now it's like 
what's the point of covering the light? You know what I'm saying? I missed that window of opportunity. And I know that was a long explanation, but I needed to put that out there is that you don't want to miss that window of opportunity. So if a new product comes out and there's been products or whatever release that's been out for a few years that everybody just automatically gets, you're going to have to weigh that knowledge or wherever and understanding between should you make that video or should you not make that video regardless on how helpful it is going to be for the consumer and a potential viewer or wherever to you know maybe not go with that product or even if it's a warning like i did another video um i would say last year about the vivitar tube lights that were like these govi light bars or wherever and they were less expensive than the Gobi ones. But I showed that in that video, you're going to want to, you know, get the more expensive version, maybe wait for a sale or something like that. But in the end, at the end of it all, as the consumer, it's going to do you better because these lights are not going to have the problem as the Vivitar lights have. And they're brighter and they're just overall just better from Gobi or wherever. And the Vivitar is a company that you should stay away from and stop purchasing their products, especially in Walmart. The key thing is what I just said, Walmart, that product is in Walmart and Gobi is starting to sell the RGB products in Walmart. I'm not sure if these tube lights have made it in there yet, but I know some of their other products like these LED strips that I have in my ceiling from Gobi, I purchased from Walmart and I use them all over my house. So again, somebody in Walmart is sitting there looking at the RGB section because they want to spruce up the stuff. They're like, oh, I seen this stuff, you know, and people set us all the time. This version of it is cheaper in Walmart. I wonder if I should get it. And I've seen people, you know, comment on that video saying, hey, man, you saved me from purchasing this or I should have watched the video and did my research before I picked up the product because it is bad. And people are complaining about the different uh, aspects of the product and everything. But that, yes, it was over, you know, done already because the govi lights have been out for a long time you know these tube lights and stuff like that from other companies such as nano leaf and all these other companies that do rgb and everything they've already been out but the key thing here is like i said i got it from walmart which is something that somebody would physically go in and be like hmm this product looks interesting and they might look up a, a video or tutorial or something like that to make an informed decision on their purchase maybe the while they're in walmart or you know they'll go and pick it up another day or wherever and they'll save that video to watch later to see if it's worth it you know or something like that or they get a product and they get it home and they're like okay let me look up a video because i'm not understanding this component or something like that that's when you would make a video because again it's different yes some people can find stuff on amazon in putting in the title or wherever, you know, best product from Amazon, or is this the best, you know, whatever, and you put a question mark, you know what I'm saying? That's a key uh, component and a keyword that people are going to look up, like when they're, you know, Googling something or they're looking on something on YouTube, you can use Amazon to, uh, you know, pull people in because that's a popular site that people are going to order stuff from, you know what I'm saying? And just like Walmart is a popular store. So if you get stuff from Walmart, Home Depot, you know, a Lowe's, something like that, and you know it's searchable because people are going to walk and most times most walmarts are a little bit different some have more in their technology sections than some other ones do and stuff like that but if you're looking at certain brands like the rgb section the technology section or wherever and you cover something the likelihood of it being in the other store and the likelihood of somebody wanting to walk up and possibly purchase it at walmart is extremely high and that's why that video did a little bit better than, you know, covering something like the Godox ES45s, even though they're better than the Elgato key lights in many ways, those products have been out from Elgato for a long time. And a lot of companies were playing catch up to make similar products or wherever for, you know, their own user base. And the problem is, is that, like I said, these things are not ready you know, at Walmart or these bigger stores, you're gonna have to find it from the company's website or like B&H Photo or Amazon or something like that. And like I said, most people are probably just gonna lean towards getting the Elgato one for whatever reason. So it's kind of like a fruitless endeavor. Whereas, like I said, if you get something from Walmart, you might miss out on some views or wherever of people watching it or wherever that like they would watch from Amazon products and stuff, but you're still gonna get a healthy amount of people who are going to be looking at stuff, like I said, in those stores because Walmarts are everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Just like when people do Ikea stuff or wherever, Ikeas are getting a little bit more popular being everywhere. The nearest one to me is like three hours away, but you know, in more, you know, busy cities and stuff where people live or other countries or something like that, they might have an Ikea like every hour, you know what I'm saying? Or something like that, like how Walmart is. And 
that might be more valuable for you. So you need to know your geographical location on where you're at. And as far as like the popularity of a store where you're at, you know what I'm saying? And you don't want to get locked in to be like, okay, this store is only really at, uh, in my state or something like that. And nobody else around the U S or another country, or wherever is going to know this, you know, store or something like that. So you have to be making sure that it's very relatable to your situation and to your area but like i said just because it's on amazon doesn't mean people are going to watch your video or wherever even if you think it should be a popular item and it's really great you have to make it searchable you know what i'm saying you have to make sure that your review is going to contain something that's going to uh, uh the product or wherever is going to be something that people are actually going to actively look for and like i said you can use a tagline of you know something on amazon or wherever the best amazon budget whatever and then question mark and then talk about and then video is this the best one or whatever there's other versions out there here's my experience with this product here's my thoughts and opinions the pros and cons you know you know your use case scenario better than me and then you know wrap up the video or something like that and if you keep doing that or whatever a lot of people are going to find like hey this person purchases a lot of stuff on amazon you know this is something that i'm interested in because i'm trying to get similar products or whatever off of amazon and everything and then sometimes with stuff it might be able to be found on amazon but the company might have built up their name a little bit more in a space let's take the likes of fine fine yes they're probably one of the budget budget uh items or whatever the best ones on amazon for microphones all that stuff as far as like quality to performance to cost but they've built up their name so much that you don't really have to put you know amazon in the title or in tags or anything like that you can just say fine fine you know what i'm saying and that will bring people's attention automatically and that's kind of what happened with the a6t that they sent out wherever the very first product that i reviewed for them um i just had a really good thumbnail and i did a thorough testing wherever of the microphone in comparison to other ones it was a kind of a longer video i was kind of well spoken or wherever in the video but i still was trying to find the way i wanted to do my videos and it wasn't really my personality put into it or wherever i feel like i was kind of still robotic because it was the first company i was working with so i wanted to make sure and i tried to do a script and that's why i just don't do them anymore but in all honesty or wherever it still worked because again it was fine fine you know what i'm saying and i and it was it was still pretty good in my personal opinion but with the video that kind of launched me into working with uh, companies or wherever and find by reaching out to me and other companies around that time was because i put out a video about a keyboard and it was the best custom you know 60 percent keyboard from amazon it was something along those lines as far as that title goes and now i think it has over 13k views or something like that um, a lot of people didn't like the video because of certain things about like the keyboard knobs and everything like that but the thing about it was it was the fact of when i was looking on amazon for a new 60 percent keyboard to replace my huntsman uh razor huntsman mini because i didn't like the software i didn't like how clacky and loud it was and i was trying to improve the audio of my stream and everything like that and you know getting the wave xlr put in you know vsts and stuff like that i just didn't like the keyboard anymore and i wanted something to replace it but i wanted the keyboard to look cool you know what i'm saying i didn't want just the the black chassis with the the keycaps and all this stuff i wanted something that was going to stand out especially if i was going to do product reviews and possibly like shooting stuff of my setup i wanted the keyboard to look cool on camera as well but the 60 percent keyboard blew up because it was 60 percent. a lot of people are looking for 60 percent keyboards because you know of gaming or productivity whatever it is and they want a small keyboard so they can have more movement for their mouse as well as they wanted something that looked cool and in the thumbnail even though it's not the best thumbnail they can see the design or wherever clearly you know what i'm saying and like i said it's from amazon and a lot of people are going to shop these things on amazon and since it was under a hundred dollars as well that just even elevated even more because that's in the budget realm a lot of more people can spend like over a thousand dollars on a keyboard which is absolutely insane to me and it doesn't really look custom like that like the custom print on the keyboard and everything and like i said it's not the best keyboard out there as far as like if you're talking about gaming performance obviously you would want to go with something with rapid triggers at now um wooting is even making more technology where the keyboard and i covered their wooting h uh, 60 he or wherever and i'm thinking of getting the 80 he because i need the arrow keys for editing and still get the same gaming uh, performance and then just put the 60 he or wherever on a shelf somewhere displaying it um and probably never going back to it it's sad but it's just the truth um and i covered that video in that 
video or whatever because it was popular the video the keyboard had just kind of came out or whatever and it was popular regardless of people were like oh it's made out of plastic or whatever so i'm gonna get a more expensive board or something or something that costs similar and everything and it's like you're missing the whole point the whole point is rapid triggers the whole point is the gaming edge that it gives you it doesn't not going to make you into a better player but it's going to be a better gaming experience overall and that's what people are missing out and that's why i kind of wanted to point out my experiences with it my thoughts on it and everything like that especially from the standpoint of not being a keyboard snob or not being somebody who is well versed in keyboards i was able to act like the average consumer the average person that's looking to have what the capabilities of that keyboard and that resonated with people because nine times out of ten these people who are looking for these certain products or whatever are just the average person you know what i'm saying they're not the high end having over a hundred something custom keyboards you know spending a hundred and something dollars or whatever for each keyboard and customing customizing out looping up switches you know picking up multiple different buckets of switches that they can choose and keycaps and all that stuff people ain't doing that you know what i'm saying so when it came to the custom you know Coral C theme keyboard that I did that blew up or wherever on the channel and the wooting one, it's relatable because like I said, people are going to need keyboards for their office, for their gaming, all that stuff like that. And 60% and sometimes TKLs, but 60% are very popular. I think 75% are starting to get a little bit more popular. So you can make videos around those products and stuck Amazon on it because people are going to shop first on those things or whatever Amazon because they're going to see the same stuff they're going to see in Walmart you know the Logitech's the Razors all that stuff and in order to find more um, companies or whatever that do keyboards or other products they're either going to have to know about the company already and find the company's website or they're going to just look on Amazon like I did and 90% of the time they're probably already looking on Amazon and trying to find one that looks really really good with a decent uh, I would say a distinct design that's going to be different from the, just the average bland looking keyboard that's all white or you know all black or whatever it may be with just some random RGB in it um, it's going to be super hard so I was able to find one that looked good or whatever that had a predestined design that yes if you weren't going to build a theme out of the design or wherever it's going to be kind of and eh, it's going to be kind of hard to match whatever setup you're trying to do depending on your design but at the same time it's still a custom printed you know keyboard it's still a decent keyboard for the value and the money and everything like that and that's why like i said the video did so good and so many people liked it you know what i'm saying so you're gonna have to like i said when you're picking videos or wherever uh or products or whatever for your first couple videos you're gonna have to pick stuff that makes sense so again when you're making these uh product videos and these product reviews you're gonna want to make sure that you're honing in on a product or wherever regardless if it's on Amazon, Walmart, whatever it is, you want to make sure that it's for one, something that people will use like all the time, like a keyboard, a mouse, you know, um, maybe a monitor, a microphone, you know, stuff like that, regardless if they're doing content creation or like I said, Zoom meetings, office work, whatever it may be, you're going to want to cover stuff in a way that makes it understandable and relatable to the average person who is looking for a product like that so again you're going to have to make sure that whatever product that you're picking like i said is going to be relatable to whatever type of content creation or office work or gaming or something like that that you're leaning towards as far as picking that product and putting it in front of people because like i said are people going to most likely look for a keyboard versus a wand light you know and the use scenarios between the two of course more people are going to want a keyboard you know what i'm saying especially even if you're putting on uh, amazon or wherever or putting the title you know amazon you know 60 percent keyboard custom keyboard whatever it may be you know that's the kind of stuff that you're going to want to do unless it's like i said a more reputable brand like fine fine is um, newer is iffy depending on their products or wherever as far as uh, what type of product you're reviewing from a company or wherever as well uh, Godox is a very very popular brand I would say as far as soft boxes and lighting and stuff goes but I covered you know their wireless microphone system and I had to gear it towards you know people who are probably going to get the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II and then I had to title that and change some stuff up or whatever because that's a popular camera that's coming out that has an intelligent hot shoe that the microphone can connect you know to wherever and people can take advantage of good quality audio or whatever at least for the price 
and again that makes it a little bit more relatable to the people because people are not going to know about godox and their wireless system unless they watch a more popular content creator who just covered the the microphone or whatever who maybe you know dabbles in in cameras so again you have to make sure that the audience that you're gearing the video towards is going to be able to be like yeah i could use that yes it makes sense as an average person don't get wrapped up into this well i would use it i know you know some of my friends would use it or something like that you have to think bigger your, your scope has to be bigger wherever to incorporate and like i said i'm still trying to nail it down sometimes my videos will hit sometimes they won't you know me saying even from my channel size some videos that i didn't think would pop off or wherever like they did end up popping off or wherever and doing fairly decent or wherever for the size of my channel and i'm not the type of person that you know use vid iq and do seo and, and all that stuff or wherever i just kind of try to use my own common sense and stuff and that's why i'm failing as a youtuber a content creator and on top of that i don't be posting you know youtube shorts and and tiktoks or wherever about the products and stuff because that's not really value to the the viewer in my personal opinion and like i said i'm wrong about it you know i'm 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 cutting my my career short by not you know taking advantage of those platforms but it's just it's just me you know what i'm saying so what i'm talking about here is long form video content and like i said hopefully that will help you out um and lastly i kind of want to talk to you guys about uh ways to make your videos a little bit smoother and one of them is if you are using multiple different cameras i've mentioned this in a lot of my previous videos but if you're using multiple different cameras like a top-down camera maybe their top-down camera is a webcam and you know your front camera or wherever is actual or camera or maybe you have two webcams or you like your cell phone footage or something like that you're probably going to want to um pick up you know obs and have capture cards or wherever connected to those uh cameras or you're going to want with those two webcams or wherever you're going to want to have them in tandem in obs and what you could do is get you something like a stream deck or a macro pad or a key a separate keyboard or something like that it, it, depending on if you're going to use the same desk that you, you know you edit from and all that stuff and what you want to do is assign a button to you know um, change the actual i would say display or wherever of what you're viewing and everything and what i mean by that is that I can do this or wherever and it shows my top down. I can do this and it shows me or wherever. You can do that on a macro pad, stream deck, whatever you want, keyboard and everything like that. And you can set it up on OBS so that you don't have to sync up your footage. Most people have to clap or something like that and you know sync up the footage and sync up the audio and all that stuff. You don't have to do all that because your audio can be you know directly into OBS. It could be directly into um, your camera or whatever. Or if you wanted to use a dedicated microphone like this one, you can have it in the shot or wherever hooked up to your xlr interface or just hooked up to your computer or something like that depending on the type of microphone and have it in the shot if you want to um and still have the capability of having something like this and it's it uh encapsulates and and shortens up your workflow because again you're not having to go out and you know stitch foot footage together unless you're going for you know um some b-roll shots or something like that with your phone or something like that because you know your webcam can't really do it or something and um with that i would say there's a lot of camera sliders out there um one of the smaller ones out there that you know i found under like 200 dollars or wherever is from smarta i forget the version of this one or wherever this one is kind of loud a little bit but um if you're not using it while you're recording wherever you'd be perfectly fine it does have a way to you know hook up to your actual camera and do time lapse but you can just put a ball head on it and you know put your phone on it gopro whatever and record the footage or whatever and with this because it's so small you're probably going to want to put the product super close and then have the camera back away or back towards or wherever so there's more of a uh closer ground or wherever to the subject of whatever you're trying to record so that way it gets a more dramatic uh movement because again like i said it's not a long slider there's other ones out there that you can find um i'll put the suggested sliders or whatever that i personally use and they'll have a problem with um down in the description but again you can see that this can sit straight on your desk or wherever and you can have the cap you can have the product you know right in front of your camera and then just you know pass by it and stuff like that and it's going to be somewhat of a smoother experience than maybe you don't have to smooth this hands to hand hold your camera or phone or something like that um so it's going to help you you know 
again, shoot the B-roll wherever to your SD card, to your phone or something like that, and then put it into your computer. And you don't need a whole bunch of fancy B-roll and everything like that. Your top down is going to be good enough. You talking about the product or wherever and displaying it in front of, the, in front of you, wherever that will be good enough. Because again, the B-roll is just going to maybe show off some uh, aesthetics or whatever of the product maybe you're talking about the pros and cons and you might slap it in there even me with having the better cameras or whatever for content creation and having the sliders and stuff it's still kind of hard for me to figure out where i'm gonna put b-roll not like picking up a product and showing the functionalities because i can nine times out of ten can do it from the top down it's just like when i talk about a product where am i going to put the b-roll it's kind of hard to to do that as far as figuring out where to put it in the actual video so again don't worry about it too too much if you if this is too expensive for you and like i said you're you're holding it by hand or wherever it's not the smoothest and the best um but just prioritize like i said trying to get that stuff into obs because obs is a free you know i would say program or whatever to record in and you can record 4k because i'm doing it right now you can't stream to platforms or whatever but you can still get that 4k footage or wherever from you know your cameras or your webcams or something like that i will also link down in the description an expensive webcam and somewhat not an expensive webcam is under 200 dollars. but you know the both of them are going to be 4k both of them are going to have ai tracking they're going to have like a gimbal thing or whatever attached so they can track you around or wherever you can do that and if you need it for the top down or wherever it can do that as well and it's just very intuitive or wherever for content creation especially something like this where nine times out of ten you're going to be you know in your studio or in your office space anyways and you're going to get the 4k footage and if you needed to you know uh, add a little bit more effects or wherever as far as like a little bit of a background blur or something like that to make it simulate a camera and stuff like that i would recommend for the on spot cameras webcams i'm going to suggest um not going above like two or three on the background blur because after that it just really looks artificial and you can really tell so i would just you know leave it about a two i would say it's probably like the sweet spot doing that into into obs or whatever just makes it seamless and what you could do if you don't want to you know put the audio like the microphone in the shot where for audio which is probably the easiest way to do because you're probably already using that audio setup or wherever for you know your live streams other video work and everything like that and maybe you just don't like the microphone in the shot and you want it to look like how this looks then an overhead microphone is going to be really good what i'm using right now is the comica vm30 it is like 180 dollars, but it's a really good audio especially when you plug it straight into your mic into your camera's uh microphone jack and what it's doing is going into the camera is being brought into the cam link 4k from elgato and then because the Camlink 4K has an audio wherever over the HDMI signal, it can be brought into Wavelink. And what I do is sometimes I will, you know, record the radio all, or I would say raw, and then bring it into DaVinci Resolve and, you know, EQ it that way if I need to, to get rid of the room echo or whatever. So it just depends on what you want to do. But like I said, that's more kind of a lengthy process, but it's a process I'm comfortable with. But the easiest process is to have an audio interface that, you know, and get you a dynamic microphone get you close to you for proximity effect have an audio interface that allows you to control the gain or wherever and just put it right there next to you and you just talk and that's like the easiest way to get really good audio and have that microphone just go directly into obs and then you have this capability of doing this and not having to sync it up in post and that makes your content creation like i said a lot smoother um as far as doing the product reviews and everything and like i said you don't have to um do it this way or anything like that uh, especially for some reason you just can only use one webcam or something it's going to be a little bit harder to talk about stuff or wherever and get the audio wherever to sync up with like your cell phone up from the top down or something like that but i would implore you to uh, get at least two webcams you know what i'm saying and make sure because nowadays uh, 60 frames per second the logitech cameras and stuff like that stay away from them the webcams and everything um i would just go with the onsbot stuff again it's up to you and then have that gimbal like camera or wherever from the onsbot the their 4k one that's like 175 dollars or wherever and it can follow you around while you're moving around and stuff like that um and it's just going to help you diversify diversify your uh, actual content creation especially for you know the actual product reviews so again those are just some helpful tips some helpful products as well as you know thinking about what your first couple um, I would say videos are going to be about 
for the whole content creation of doing product reviews. If you missed the first part, I will leave it linked in the description as well as popping on screen. If you're new to the channel and you wanna see some of the other product reviews I have done, just for, I would say, better examples from worst to best, then a product review playlist will pop it up on your screen right now. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new to the channel and I'll catch you guys later. Take care, have a squid day. God bless you and yours and deuces everybody. Much love.